Bless me. Whew. I wanted to talk about a little bit of an update with the job search. I will have a video hopefully coming out in the next month or so. I'm not entirely sure. With the interviews that I'm doing or will be doing in the future and what offers I get. But right now I had one interview that I included in that portion of the video but I ended up not getting it not even close to getting an offer. But it was a very exciting job that I wanted to talk to everyone about and I want to explore it a little bit more and I thought this would be a great time to discuss this area since it is connected to coding and it's another avenue you could go into if you find coding isn't quite your thing or possibly getting experience for coding you might just find that you like it and I think I might like it too. So the position at least at my hospital it's called clinical data registrar and we have four or five registries, so cancer registry, trauma registry, birth registry, and joint replacement registry, so four. And I had heard about the cancer registry from my mom who works at the VA in the radiology department. She gets contacted by them all the time for cases that the radiologists want to present at their weekly conferences aka tumor boards and I had heard from a couple of viewers and maybe I should look into cancer registry so I decided to look into it especially since this position popped up and as I was reading it I was finding oh yeah this is really interesting I really want to look into this because it might be a better fit than coding I'm not sure so I applied, I met all the requirements as far as having anatomy and physiology, a HIM background, a coding background. Technically I don't have actual coding experience, but I at least have my certification and I've at least been doing some coding things, so I'm aware of coding. And you didn't need any special certification. Hmm. So I applied and I got an interview. So I went to the interview, it went great. Um, the supervisor of the clinical registries department is amazing. She is a lot of fun and she's really great. And there were other interviews that were scheduled and I knew in the back of my head this would be a really great fit. I liked everything she was saying. It seems more interesting than coding, but I understand some of these other, other applicants may have already been registrars or have been in coding and on the job coding because the supervisor said she's looking for someone with coding experience. So anyone who's already done coding as a job and or done trauma registry, which is this position was for the trauma registry, if they have been or are a trauma registrar, then obviously they're the better fit. I was okay knowing that I might not get this job even though the interview went great and the supervisor was very impressed with everything I was saying. So I wasn't putting any hopes on anything, but I was very excited to learn more. And also in the interview, she said that I could go to tumor boards. So the committee conferences that the cancer registrars run and do, she said that I could go to those and the trauma committee conference meetings that they do, I could go to those too. So after the interview the next day, I had sent her an email just saying, oh, it was really great meeting you. I had a really great time. Thank you for the opportunity. And then in the meantime, are there any shadowing opportunities that I could do with the trauma or cancer registrars? And when could I go to one of the tumor boards or the trauma conferences? Because I'd be really interested in at least seeing that. And she got back to me saying, we're a little bit busy at the moment because people with holiday, vacation, all that crap. But in the future, definitely. So then once I found out that I didn't get the position, I had quick emailed her to make sure that yes, the status of my application was correct, that I was not chosen, because that's how I found out. Did not hear from the HR recruiter, but anyway. And she said, oh, the other candidate that we chose is a certified trauma registrar and has is a coder so I was like okay totally get it 
that was a good thing because I guess they were backlogged in the registry so they needed someone with experience that they didn't really have to train too much. I get it. And then also in the emails, I'll read them off because this is really awesome and amazing of her. So, when she said, oh, we chose someone else, she said, don't get discouraged. You're a wonderful applicant and I certainly will consider you for future positions when they become available. She said that either later this year or next year is when they are hoping to have more positions open for the cancer registry and also the joint replacement registry. So that's great that she's going to be considering me for those future positions, thankfully. And she is thinking that they'll have more full-time postings in 2019. And then she said that she truly enjoyed the interview and she thinks I has, have great potential. So I emailed her back and I let her know that I will be keeping an eye on those future postings. And then I asked her what she thinks I should do to gain more experience or to get my feet wet in the registry field, what I should be doing. And then I do plan on taking the cancer registry courses through AHIMA. I think there's like four or five of them. And financially, I can totally do them, even if it's just to see if I like it. And if not, no big deal. But I told her that's what I want to do as far as in the meantime. And then I asked if she had any internship type opportunities in the future or anything that I can do that they don't have to pay me for. Just voluntarily, what can I do to gain more experience and be more involved with the department so it's an easier transfer once a position opens up. So she said taking the courses through HEMA is a great idea and then she said there is a shortage of the cancer registrars across the country right now so it's a great career path to go into and then if I do go that route of as far as taking courses and then doing an internship and wanting to get certified with that, they, my hospital, accepts applications for formal practicum hours and training. But she said before that, uh, she said that I could attend the tumor board and get a feel for what that's all about. So in the October department meeting, she's going to bring that up and then see if I could sit with one of the cancer registrars in a shadowing capacity and see who can do that and when, all that good stuff. And then I can let her know at the end of the year after I've done all of those things, if yes, I'm so very interested in it, and then she will keep me posted on anything that opens up. So I'm very excited about that. Because even if I don't want to get into this field, I like having the opportunity to at least shadow and be somewhat involved and be hands-on and figure it out, figuring it out. Just reading about these positions isn't enough to get a feel for what it's like and if it's something you will truly enjoy. So don't be ashamed or afraid of just contacting the department you're interested in and saying, can I shadow one of your employees? Or can I go to this meeting or this event to see if I like it because I want to learn more and maybe transition to that in the future? They're usually very open to that because they're always, almost any field is always looking for people or they're just happy to get people interested in it. And if they spend that time working with you, and you enjoy it and they like you, they're going to want to invest more time with you and hopefully get you a position if you meet the qualifications and you are very interested in going that route. So I'm more than happy to take as many opportunities that come by and enjoy the experience and see what it's like. So in the next couple of weeks or whenever the the tumor boards happen and the shadowing happens. I will let y'all know how it went, what I learned, all that good stuff. I'm excited. So with all of that, I guess it would make sense to describe a little bit more about what the trauma registry does and what the cancer registry does because I didn't really talk about it. <laughs> so we'll at least do a nice little summary of what my perception of the positions are. And then anyone who is in the trauma registry or cancer registry that is watching this video, please in the comments below, share your experience and 
your views on what the position is like because I know for sure I'm not going to cover everything and it's not going to be that exact. But, so let's start out with cancer registry. So from what I can infer and what I perceive cancer registrars do from reading about it, talking with the supervisor, etc. The cancer registrar essentially is the person or the people that track patients who have been diagnosed with and are actively being treated for or in remission of cancer. So if you have a cancer diagnosis, the cancer registrars are going to pick that up and they are going to abstract all the pertinent information from your medical records and they are going to be putting that into their local database, their state database, etc. The databases that house all that information. Now the type of information that they get, I'm not entirely sure the extent, but I know that the information that they get from it is for more of the statistical data, the quality improvement, for research, the life expectancy, that sort of thing. So they're getting all of that information, all of that data, and they can analyze that data to then present it at the tumor boards, which happen every week usually, at monthly, quarterly, yearly meetings that are involved with cancer registry, and that information is used to further treatments, to look at the different types of treatments that they offer, how things can be changed to improve some of those numbers. They have a lot that they use this information for. And the tumor boards specifically are the oncologists, physicians, surgeons, any clinical professional that is involved with cancer patients will usually attend these meetings and they usually present cases of their patients that have been newly diagnosed with cancer, are currently in treatment, and if it's going well, if they're in treatment and it's not working, and a lot of these tumor boards are based around brainstorming and learning about rare cases, what's been happening, what we can do to improve the treatment if it's not working, etc. And it's really used to improve and develop and expand the medical treatment of cancer. That's what I get from it. And I think that's really exciting. I find that topic or just being around people that are talking about it very interesting. Even though I wouldn't have my hand in or be involved in the actual treatment of these cancer patients, just being around that information is very stimulating and very interesting and motivating for me. So that's why I was drawn to Cancer Registry once majority of the people that I talk to tell me to look at it. And I finally did. And I'm glad I did because it's more of an immersive experience than just coding. Whereas with coding, you're reading the op reports, clinic notes, etc. And you are applying the codes and then it gets sent off to bill billing. And that's the extent. If you do talk to with a physician, it's just to get clarification on what they wrote down. And that's about it. You don't really get to go to these meetings and have in-depth conversations or be around in-depth conversations with physicians, oncologists, surgeons, etc. You might when you get around to doing CEUs, but other than that, you don't really have that type of relationship or interaction with the clinicians. And I really want to have that type of interaction. The more I'm hearing about it, the more I'm craving that, where I think in coding I might miss that. Now, trauma registry is a little bit different as far as what they're talking about. So trauma registry is tracking every single trauma case that comes into the hospital. I believe a trauma registry has to be in every hospital that is deemed a trauma center, but don't quote me on that. But it would make sense if you're a trauma center, then you got to track all that data. And they take a large volume of information from each case. What happened in the ambulance? What information was gleaned from the paramedics and, and EMS and all of that? What was their response time when they got to the hospital? What was our response time from our ER doctors and nurses, etc.? What did they all do? 
and getting all that clinical data from that encounter. And then if they were admitted, what's the rate of how many people are admitted once they come into RER as a trauma? What is the, not, not morbidity, I can't think of the word. Anyway, how many of them end up being fatalities once they get to our hospital? And how many have infections after they are admitted to the hospital? You know, so they are gathering so much information and a lot of that is for the own hospital's quality improvement and performance. It is also for the city, county, and state. They take all of that data and they analyze it and find the statistics of certain situations or certain types of traumas, etc. And the trauma registrars use ICD-10 coding. They track the diagnosis and then also the external cause codes and injury codes. I don't know what else they do with ICD-10 coding, but you have to have some idea of the ICD-10 coding system because trauma registrars use it and apply it every day. And they also have their weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly conference committees, and that is with all of the medical professionals that have a hand in trauma cases. And I don't know the extent of what they talk about, but I'm going to assume they talk all about the data that the registrars pull and all of the statistics and analysis that happens with that information. So that is kind of a very vague description of what both of those registries do. I find both of them insanely interesting. I like the expansive interaction the registrars have with the data and the clinicians. I like that and that's what's drawing me to it more than coding. But I'm going to keep my options open as far as coding jobs go because it's good to have that experience regardless if you're going to get into registry or not. So I think I covered everything. When I get to the tumor boards and the shadowing, I'll make another video describing what that was all like, what I all did, etc. And then I'll keep you posted in the future if I decide to go into registry work and as far as positions that come up with that, I'll keep you all posted. So if you have not done so already, please hit the subscribe button so you can get notifications on all the videos that I post so you're always in the know. Also comment below if you are a trauma or cancer registrar or you have experience in that field. Please let me know what your thoughts are on them or the experiences that you have with those fields because I love to read it and I hope all the viewers would also like to read it. And then like this video if you like the topic that I covered and my explanations on the registries and also why I'm interested in it. And I'll see y'all later. Bye!